Okay, just look at that output. You, like, you can't tell me that this doesn't set the standard for what every piece of JavaScript tooling should be doing. Hey, welcome back to Release Radar. I'm Chris Biscardi, and today we are talking about a test runner called Jest. Jest has been my default test runner for the last few years. While version 27 is the latest major release of Jest, it's not actually the 27th major release. Continuing a trend in the JavaScript ecosystem of realizing you haven't shipped 1.0, and yet you have people depending on you like your 1.0, which turns into JavaScript projects that have version like 0.x, 0.9, 0.10, turning into x.0, or version 10, or version 11 for their next release. This happened to React, it happened to Jest, and it's happened to other projects as well. Jest is a JavaScript ecosystem test runner that grew in popularity alongside React, Compared to other test runners like Jasmine or Ava, it's been dominating the NPM download count for a couple years now. These days, Jest works with all major UI frameworks that I'm aware of, including React, Angular, Vue, and more. In my opinion, it has most importantly pushed forward the user experience of creating, running, and fixing tests in your code base. That is, in my opinion, it's raised the bar for user experience or developer experience for all tools across the board even though Jest specifically only deals with tests. With an interactive CLI and colored output that can match some of the better GUI applications, it's easily the most usable test runner currently on the market. Here's an example of a bunch of failing tests in a project that does nothing. That is, I don't have any library code or application code. I only have tests. Now, if we have a bunch of failing tests, we don't want to deal with all of them at once, so we can run only the failed tests. We can further pare this down with a regex to run only tests we care about. And you can see that even though I have three tests here, all of which are failing, I pared it down to the one that I want to work on right now. This is the power of using the Jest CLI for your test infrastructure. You develop a working relationship with your tests rather than just running them in CI later. Jest 27's big changes are to the defaults. Defaults may not sound like much if you've never maintained a large open source project with more than a million downloads, but when it comes down to it, defaults are what drive a user adoption and behavior. And most people, don't end up changing defaults. So by setting defaults, you are defining what most people will do when they install your project. On top of that, nobody wants to install your project and then make five tweaks and install a couple packages to get to where they want to be. Jest has for a long time depended on hard forked pieces of Jasmine, another test run. What I mean by hard forked is that the code was copied into the Jest code base and not intended to be upstreamed back into Jasmine, but rather a base for building on top of for Jest's purposes without having to worry about other consumers of that code. When doing this, often the two code bases, Jasmine itself and the fork piece inside of Jest, will diverge over time as Jasmine adds more features and functionality and bug fixes, and Jest does the same in its own way. The somewhat 2.0 version of this forked code is called Jest Circus, which the Jest team has determined is now ready to replace the old Jasmine infrastructure. Jest Circus integrates better with Jest's internal core, as the original Jasmine code was never meant to really be used in this way inside of Jest. So it's exciting to see the modernization of this code into an official package that is meant to work with Jest's internals and error reporting infrastructure. Jest has also for a long time shipped JS DOM as a default test environment. JS DOM is a job JavaScript-only implementation of many of the DOM and HTML APIs. Because it's emulating the APIs, it's not always fully compatible with the existing browsers on the market, but rather it's a solid 90% solution that lets you run most of your tests, and if you use things that are too new or too hard to support, you'll have to find another way. So JS DOM being a solid piece of software isn't the issue. The issue is that JS DOM by default is slow and has significant performance impact. And many times, bootstrapping an entire emulated environment isn't what you need, and many people running Jest don't actually know that that's the default environment, leading to many people running JS DOM-based tests when they don't even need to use the DOM or HTML APIs. In Jest 27, this is being changed from JS DOM to Node. The Node environment runs much faster because it doesn't include these emulated APIs and bigger environments. You can, of course, continue to use JS DOM or Node on a per-file basis anywhere you need to in your application. As part of these default changes, the forked Jasmine code package, Jest Jasmine 2, and the JS DOM environment package, Jest Environment JS DOM, are planned to be removed in a future release to trim down the size of the installed Jest package when you're not using them. And as we discussed earlier, the defaults really matter, so most people will end up not using them if they don't need them. Overall, I think this Jest major release shows off how infrastructure projects with millions of downloads should handle major breaking changes across versions. Tell people those changes are coming ahead of time, 
give them a couple versions to migrate off, and then remove the old code a couple versions later, after everybody has been aware of the changes, given time to move off, and are now on the new version of the code. Native ESM support for Jest seems to be progressing, but isn't ready yet in most cases. So you'll have to look elsewhere if you plan to write and distribute only ES modules. This is important because the ecosystem is starting to rev away from CommonJS and towards ES modules by default. This will mean that many packages that you use will start to use the stable ESM support in Node, as well as the stable ESM support in many browsers. That said, if you want to build modules for Jest itself, those can be written in ESM, and the support for them is far more advanced than the current test level support. Progress is also being made on supporting tools like ESBuild, Vite, and Snowpack by being able to run async transformations. Overall, I think this is a really solid release for Jest, and I'm really looking forward to the ES module support so that I can go back to using it in all of my projects rather than just some of them.